Who am I speaking with? Uh, Mark Britton. Well, who, that took who, a second. Yeah, it did. Who am I speaking with? <laughs> Wait a minute, how did I get here? So you're on the board now at Cleo, right? I am. It's how long awesome. have you known Jack? Oh, that's, you know, we, we've talked about that. I mean, from the very beginning of Cleo, I can't right. tell you exactly where and when it was, but, uh, you know, Jack started coming to our AVO conference early on. We had him speaking at our AVO right. conference. And what I loved about Jack from the beginning is that he just, um, pushing the cloud, although in retrospect, it seems like such a simple concept in the same way that like <coughs> rating attorneys or having a marketplace seems like such a simple concept. But we connected very early and very strongly because I just thought he had such a great sense for where lawyers needed to go with technology. And uh, so we met somewhere early on, probably at a conference, maybe the AVO conference. We connected and we've always uh, been close since. I just love the guy. And well, I love what he does for the industry. Yeah, it's a great culture. It's, it's very. I find it inspiring. I met Jack before they launched the company. This you met guy. me before we launched our company. Yeah, you guys saw both. In both cases, you guys sought me out. I have no idea why. Because <laughs> you're a pain in the yeah. behind. <laughs> Trying to neutralize the guy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, met in a, I think we met down in the Starbucks. Starbucks in Pioneer, in Pioneer Square. Square. Very These good. guys were quizzing me for about two to three hours. Basically, I'm, I'm hearing a, you know, a, a plan for how do we, how do we take out Martin Deal. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the guy that's been there. For you, your company got bought by them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now your name is on their side. Martin Deal Avo. It's wild <laughs> to see, but it, the the legacy of Avo will continue. Yeah. <clears throat> so now you're on the board at at, at Clio. You know, Avo sold and it's been sold for how long now? Uh, a year, year and a half. Yeah, and then you've been out doing different things, uh -huh. make, making investments. You're sitting at, in a you're sitting in a, in a venture capital uh, enterprise. I, right I work. I work formally. I work uh, with Madrona Rona. Ventures, right. which is really the premier Northwest and right. one of the West Coast venture capital groups as far as early venture. Right. And then I also do quite a bit of work on a one-off basis, not in a formal role with quite a bit of growth equity, and one of them resulted in the Clio deal. Right. And also um, private equity. Good for you. And are, the, are, is, are all of those along the West Coast where they're at? No, they're, I mean, a lot of private equity, private equity is everywhere, right. quite honestly, but a lot's in New York. Um, yeah, it tends to be tech-oriented. It tends to revolve around uh, kind of white-collar, like legal tech, fintech type stuff. Right. Tell, I mean, I mean you, have, you have lawyers here, you have entrepreneurs here. Now your work, like you're, you're working at Madrona, and it is it's a highly respected company yeah. that I found myself in there just asking questions of people at times, but am I doing the right stuff? Yeah, am I doing really the wrong stuff? Really smart people. They're really smart. And I, I, mean, I think when I arrived in Seattle, the, one of the lead partners had run, I don't know about Delta or maybe Burlington Northern River. I'm trying to remember oh, the yeah, people. Oh yeah, it was Jerry Grinstein, <coughs> yeah. who was actually also on the Expedia board when I was general counsel oh, really? at Expedia. Yeah. <laughs> It's Jerry Greenstone, <laughs> yeah. and he is, he's fantastic. You're sitting there in the reception area, and you're going, those guys are behind the walls here. What the, how the hell did I get in this place? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I would, but, but what's Mark Britton's role at these various places, at Madrona, you know, on private equity? You know, It's all different. And it's what, all do, different. what can it be? I mean, like at Madrona, well, what, what, are, what are you, when you're involved there, what are you doing? Well, it's interesting because I actually have the same title that Jerry Greenstone has. That's so very good. What, one, one of the things that Madrona has done very smartly is they take in a number of um, successful ex-CEOs, so Sujil Patel, who founded Isilon, uh, Steve Singh, who founded Concur, there's me, there's some others. Then two of their founders they have in this strategic director role. And um, I mean, to be totally fair, I think it's for those that aren't necessarily looking to become venture capitalists. That's right. not, okay. I, I don't want to be a VC. But I do want to invest, and I want to work with interesting companies. So there's a there's a symbiotic relationship there where I can help bring them companies, I can help them vet companies, and it, for me, selfishly, it helps me, uh, you know, stay plugged into the Seattle business community, help entrepreneurs in the way that a lot of people help me be right. successful at Avo, and then also I can figure out, I mean, I've got a whole team helping me think through, or maybe they're thinking through it, and I'm drafting behind. Uh, what would be great investments? Right. <clears throat> when you think about investments, what what goes through Mark Britton's head? You know, like, and there's a whole myriad of things. But what, you know, what are the things that seem to attract you? The team. I mean, team. It's, yeah. I, I really, it's um, it's something that I don't think is a unique, or, you know, uh, a revelation for anybody right. that spends a lot of time investing. But 
you break it down as there is, it, I think it starts with the CEO and the people that the CEO has, has put around him or her. And then um, the size of the market <laughs> is the next most important thing. And then the idea that they have for that market, I would argue is the third most important thing because most likely that the idea that they have, the inefficiency we'll that change. they found, like how they're how they're attacking it will change. Yeah. So you need you need it you need a TAM that's big enough to make some mistakes, <laughs> but you need a team that whatever mistake they make, like whatever wall they hit, they're gonna climb over. Mm. And so that's what I just so many great companies have pivoted into being great companies. And so maybe it's almost like an insurance policy. Right. You want to focus on the entrepreneur rather than the idea. But if you can hit all three, then that's where you drive valuation. So you're on the I mean you're on the board at, at Abo, which is obviously in the legal space or legal tech space. But the type of opportunities and the type of things that interest you would, would go beyond legal tech, obviously. Oh, yeah, no, I do I do a lot in travel, not surprisingly. Again, fintech is something that uh, is you know, you're looking for those adjacencies and um, the, really, I think what I'm best known for is marketplaces. So ABBA was such a successful marketplace in a, and so just for anybody who is watching this, a marketplace in the most simple sense is where you have two sets of people that are trying to find each other and right. you act as a facilitator in between. Mm -hmm. And um, so... Uh, there are all sorts of um, interesting marketplaces, but you think of um, uh, Zillow or Avo or Yelp. You went back to the travel. I mean, you go back. Well, yeah, th there are there are very like uh, TripAdvisor right. would be a, 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 an informational marketplace. But um, uh, so now I got a little off track explaining marketplaces. Oh, so I'm. You know, I think what I'm most known is for somebody in a really hard industry, and actually two, because you remember we did doctors and sold yeah. that to health tech. <laughs> so there is at least the perception, whether it's founded or not, that hey, getting something started that in, in an industry, in a vertical that is that difficult, can we talk to you about our marketplace idea and sell them as that illegal? What do you, you, you know, if, if you had, uh, you know, uh, small legal tech company here, and there's a lot of them here. Some are exhibiting, some are just walking around yep. trying to absorb yep. the space, and they come up and say, Mark, <clears throat> what should I be thinking yeah, about? I, what I should I be less doing? less than 10 of them that have hit me. Really? Since. Oh, yeah. Uh, people that are either quite developed and, and presenting, um, or there are a number of people who are just in the process of getting businesses off the ground. Oh, you're not a bad person to talk to. I mean, for them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is hard, though, in this environment to get the whole download to give them meaningful <laughs> feedback. Right. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Like, there was a gentleman who came and sat with me. Um, I was kind of running in between uh, media stuff, including <laughs> this. Uh, but he, uh, I was trying to grab a bite to eat, and he stopped and said, hey, let me tell you about this um, content marketplace that I'm trying to build. And it was a super interesting discussion, um, and but mostly I just appreciate it. And anybody that's trying to do something different, I want to give them some of my time, right? Uh, because like it's hard getting these businesses off the ground is incredibly hard. <laughs> so, oh, that's know. right. That's why that's why I talk to the the entrepreneurs about. You know, and yeah. why did you do it? Yeah. What was your? You know, what was the hardest moment? What yeah. was the hardest moment at Apple? Maybe it was deciding that we're going uh, to sell. I think there were a lot. I, um, so getting sued nine days after we launched, that was hard. Um, <laughs> what was, what's the lawyer's name? Uh, which one? John you, Henry Brown. <laughs> which one? Yeah. You had a good lawyer defending you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, which you, what you there, there's an implication you make in that. No, Bruce is, I mean, didn't you have Bruce Johnson defending no, you? No, 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 that, he was defending us. That's what I mean, Bruce Johnson oh, was yeah. defending you. Oh, yeah. I mean, is, you had a great lawyer. Bruce is, I'll tell you that on that, one of the, I, I'd never, being a lawyer, right. I was always told that you never guarantee anything from the client. I was, we were, you got to understand that I, both from a product standpoint and from a um, media standpoint, I mean, I, I had been working day and night for months, and I, I was at the end of my rope. Like, you launch a big consumer product like that that's in the spotlight, it just almost killed me. And then we get sued nine days later, and I remember going into their office so spent, I mean, I, I, was, I was just, I was a mess. I was just crumpled in the seat. Bruce and his partner said, okay, walk us through the whole thing. We walked through it. And Bruce said, 
you realize you're going to win this case. Yeah, I can and see him like, saying that. And it was like a huge cloud being lifted to have that type of First Amendment. Yeah. One of the best known First Amendment lawyers in the United States. He's able to compartmentalize things so fast. Yeah. And get very clear in the message of this yeah. is what's likely to happen. No, we and we used Bruce for all sorts of stuff after that. I mean, Davis Wright is a phenomenal firm, and and he is just an exceptional lawyer. Yeah, and to me, it was it was it was cool to watch it play out on First Amendment grounds. Like we have the right to do this. Um, now there were people that called me, or I called them, and I said, "What do you think?" And they go, "I think they're going to be out of business in, three, in 60 days." Yeah, and well, then there were some were major wrong. players, and they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't Martindale or Lexus yeah, Nexus. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it was scary. It was hard. Um, I just I, what was really hard about it is they were fairly media savvy. They knew their way around media, and so, for example, they called down anyone who had um, done an article on us that was favorable or unfavorable and called them and told them a story. What, what a lot of people don't understand, and even reporters don't understand, is that just because it's in a complaint doesn't make it true. That's right. And so, you know, they would mail that complaint and tell the story, and it was really, I, I spent, so I talked about the two weeks, two months, that were, were um, I mean, it was really acute on the media front, the two weeks going into launch, and then I had another, at least two weeks, where I would literally sit in a conference room with the head of PR, and all day long do media interviews trying to tell the story. Persuade, yeah. And because everybody was convinced that we were up to no good. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, we're going to talk. We'll be no, just about done. No, okay. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> no, I, I, it's kind of, it's not funny to you, but I mean, you guys went so far beyond that. That I don't even remember that anymore. You have it indelibly in your in yeah, your skull. Yeah, it was just it was so <laughs> impacting at the time. But yeah, I mean there were. I, I just don't think you can run a business without a series of highs and lows. Right? No, like and, that. and anyone thinks that they're going to get away with the lows, need to go do something. I remember else. when our platform went down. It was first fifteen hours, and I'm, I'm putting my head over the top of the urinal, going, "It's not." supposed to be this hard. Yeah. Somehow we're going to recover from this. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, one of the things around selling Avo that really drove it home for me is I remember my wife, who is a lawyer and used to be a big firm lawyer, right. and she gets it. I mean, she gets the stress that goes in kind of big corporate. And she was, I mean, kind of bulletproof in that it, it was never an issue that my wife raised about whether me being on the road or me not calling or <laughs> working late or whatever it was. And uh, I, when we were talking about whether we should sell the company, she turned around and said, quite honestly, I'd just like to have my husband back. And that was like, it was, I, I, I don't think, I knew, so you talk about standing at the urinal. I would come home for dinner so many times and my wife would be like, talk. That you need to like, get your mouth moving. Yeah, it doesn't and happen. You're just you're thinking about something else. I, I'm still at the office, and the kids are there, and they <laughs> don't totally see it. But so anyway, uh, having her so forcefully say it's time. How old are your kids now? Uh, just sent one off to college, yeah. which is fascinating. But you, but you, have, you have plenty of time. I mean, a great time to have sold your company. I mean, it's no good. Oh, it's but, perfect. But, but for you to spend time with the kids, to get this time in life, to yeah, step my back. My son's and, going to school out in Boston, and I was able to go back and forth with him multiple times. I never would have been able to do that. Right. No, it's, it's the greatest gift. It really <laughs> is. And so I have two still at home. They're just awesome, wonderful, fun kids. And, and my wife as well. It just, it, it, that is where I'm, if there's anything, I mean, I'm still finding my feet a little right. bit. But if there's anything that really feels stable, it's that time that I get to spend with my family. Yeah. And when, and some night when you guys are out to eat, you'll be talking about some some deal more often than another one. And it's like, wow, are you going to get involved in this thing again or do that? Yeah, I, that, uh, yeah, th that's a tough one. But you're I, a young, you're a young guy. I mean, it could happen again. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I would. I I don't know exactly what that looks like. I'm open to anything right. if it moves the world forward in right. some way. Like, I have an idea. Like, I, I actually focused on an idea for about mm, three months that I know would make money. But then I stopped myself and I was like, really the only thing this does is makes money. Make money. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was more around the advertising space. And I was like, is that, that's not, I, I was having a tough time. I was, 
I was spending a lot of time with a really smart guy that that's uh, uh, a younger developer engineer type. And I just was having a tough time getting back to him. And what it dawned on me is this is just about money, and that's not what I want to go do. When you next. when you when you spoke at the last you know conference after it was announced it was sold, and you had a picture of the highway you know going at the mountains, you know what is the where does the road take you? Yeah. And it was you know, kind of sense a little bit hollow, and that I'm going to need to find something that is meaningful. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't yeah. know what that is yet, and I'll find it at some point in time. Um, but it, it, there's a lot of truth to that. If you get uh, you get as old as I am, then it becomes all that much more important. You know, if I have to tell my team, I mean, we have to do something meaningful. Yeah. We, we have to focus on what the most meaningful thing is, yeah. even if it's not the money thing. <laughs> yeah, and it's the speech that I just gave. Uh, you know, the, the Cleo folks right. asked me to give this speech, and I was like, yeah, happy to do it. But it could say, one of the things I talk about is uh, the core purpose. And a lot of organizations, and especially a lot of law firms, really struggle getting to the why of... Uh, you know, why do they exist? Why do their customers choose them right. over anybody else? They don't ask those questions. And in a company, you're all, always asking that. Always. <laughs> I mean, the best leaders are. They're constantly <laughs> peeling back the onion to say, why? You know, once you distill it down to the why of that core purpose, mission, whatever you want to call it, everything kind of rolls out pretty easily behind it, especially, you know, the, the, the how and the what. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it, I mean, you're better CEO than I ever was, but... Uh, I, I don't but, know. We've never worked together. Well, you the way amazing. The way you grew that team and the way that then they took their place and they took on greater responsibility and you added even you know more talented people. But you know, I struggle with at times. Remember that it's the why we do things yeah. and why do, people, why do people why? select us as opposed to somebody else because that's the thing we have to think about. Yeah. And then you guys will figure out how we're going to deliver that because you guys yeah. because you're smarter than me in, in the functions you're in. And a lot of CEOs, a lot of leaders in general, really have a tough time letting go like that. And very try. hard, very hard for me. Really? And I, but all the time I'm up to so much. I'm much lazier let go, than you. Let go, let go. I don't know. Maybe people that worked with me would disagree, but no, it, it, I, you know, Rich Barton, who yep. was very involved with Apple, phenomenal what he did. Yeah. So he's one of the greatest leaders <laughs> of all time, really. <laughs> And I remember him saying to me when we were, um, so I was off teaching in Italy, kind of got the whole spark for this thing. And Rich actually came out. We went on a bike trip together with our families in, in southern Italy, in Puglia, and uh, uh, kind of pitched him on this, essentially, uh, uh, Zillow for lawyers, right. right? And he was like, I love it. It's so simple, <laughs> but I love it. And. Um, so then he came back, and I'll keep this story uh, much shorter. Oh, I came back from Italy, and um, we were sitting down having, I mean, he was just instrumental in helping connect me early on with some people like Bill Gurley at Benchmark, et cetera, to help us uh, kind of get it on to the next phase of, of fundraising or what have you. But I remember him saying, uh, actually, I'll, I'll give you two things he told me. <laughs> on the lawsuit that we talked about, I remember him telling me in a board meeting, if it's not scary, it's not important. That <laughs> That's right. And I, and I thought, I was like, that made me feel so much better. The other was, he said, You're, you will only succeed if you surround yourself with a bunch of smart people and let them run the company. And I, oh. and I, and I, and I so followed that in really the investment that I made I just went out and found like the smartest people, especially from Expedia early on. That I could. Right. Yeah, I mean, so. there's a lot of truth to that because the, the more they grow, the more yeah. exciting it is for them to be around. And you watch them. I mean, I, I, I tell the team, I said, the most rewarding thing for me is to watch you guys grow. Yeah. And I said, if you do decide to leave at some point in time because of what you became here and what you learned, I said, that's incredibly great. Yeah, now, the other employees read. that watch those people leave, they get very, like, that was mean of them to do that. I said, I don't know. Yeah, I read something really pithy that says it's so better than I say it. I, I, maybe it'll come to me. But what I have, even in speeches to groups of lawyers, I've often said, um, train people to leave you. Yeah. And uh, I tell the story of a, of a Miami lawyer that uh, uh, said to me, um, I, I can't train people to do what I do. And when I do, they leave. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I just so wanted to say to her that, you know, you, you 
what you do is you train them to leave, but then you give them reasons to stay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The first, when I started my first law firm, and the <coughs> best associate came in, he said, you know, I could go to any firm in town. I said, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm working really hard to help you be really great. You're already good. I said, hopefully I can retain you. I mean, it, are, do you really want to keep your people untrained <laughs> so that you have a bunch of dummies that surround yeah. you? It just doesn't, it doesn't work, and yet you see that kind of philosophy rear its head over and over. And so, yeah, I think and great and leaders. And that, you know, that's like your talk. I mean, this is how law, law firms aren't thinking that way. Yeah. Versus you as the CEO of a good company, you're thinking that way. How do I hire great people and help them get better at what they do so they could go anywhere they want in their life? Yeah, and then give them a reason to stay. Okay. And usually, you know, they, that person that's thinking about leaving or, or you feel that they might be thinking about leaving, then give them another, give them a chunk of the business and yeah. them go build it you want, out. You're, you want a chunk and, of the action. And take, yeah. take a third, <laughs> take whatever it is. But have the, you know, whatever the percentage is, that's called leverage. Yeah. That's, I, and it, it is so antithetical to so many lawyer managers. It's fun to talk with you. Yeah, you should do it sometime over I, a coffee in Seattle. Yeah, seeing, seeing as that we're, <laughs> we're more than just down the street. Um, well, it's always good you. to see you, and I love, I love what you guys do. We're trying. We're trying to do different stuff.